eight. We are celebrating our theme for the year, Soaring Higher. With strength, love, and zeal, we recognize our wholeness. And as one team, one community, we are reaching our greater potential. And that's exciting. Thank you. Trying to find that cursor sometimes. Here we go. <clears throat> so today we have the great fortune of, uh, we're going to spend some time with Reverend Rob Brzezinski out of Colorado. And I'll just share a little bit about Reverend Rob. So Reverend Rob is an ordained religious science minister and the spiritual and creative director of New Thought Media Network. And that's where I've met Reverend Rob. He holds a master's degree in consciousness studies and is currently working to share the New Thought message around the world. During his 20 years in the New Thought movement, he has developed a unique perspective of how everyone can use the principles and practices of new thought to create the life they truly desire. He's a passionate speaker, a visionary leader, and a heart-centered parent to two teenagers, husband to an amazing woman, and a friend to countless spiritual seekers and leaders. And I'm very happy to invite you today, Reverend Rob, to uh, speak with us. Mm, thank you. Thank you all. I, I find it very fun that Unity Kitchener and Unity Ottawa combine together on Sunday mornings to sell in the share in the celebration of this thing we call spiritual living. And um, I also find it very fun uh, that while I have spoken outside of the United States in physical form, uh, this is truly my first appearance speaking in Canada, and it gets to be in a virtual form. And that, to me, is a representation of the oneness that I trust everyone in this room has believed for long enough that we are now experiencing the demonstration of our belief and our long-held pr uh, profession of the oneness of humanity and of life. And that's what we're going to talk about today. However, we do want to get started with a meditation. So if you're in a comfortable place to close your eyes, I invite you to please do so. And if you're driving a vehicle or operating machinery, well, now would be a good time to pull over for a minute. And I just invite you to breathe into the moment. Feel that holy breath. That holy breath that is animating your body temple. That holy breath that is the breath of the one. We may call it God or Buddha or Brahma. Yahweh, Vishnu, Kuan Yin, Source Energy. Gaia. No matter the name, no matter the image, the icon. We come together to recognize the oneness. The oneness that is representing itself, expressing itself as all of life. As my life, as the lives of each and every one on this broadcast in this sacred space. Those that may experience this at another time and perhaps even in another dimension. We come together this day to celebrate and experience, to embrace and embody the divine feminine. That aspect of ourselves that is beyond gender and beyond role, that aspect of ourselves that is intuition and compassion, that is creativity and communication, that is love and caring. Mm. And so in this moment, 
I invite you to bring into your mind all those beings that have served you along your journey in the role of mother, those that perhaps have expressed the divine feminine, bring into your mind's eye an image of the absolute divine feminine. And for some of us, perhaps, we had a mother that we didn't understand or the mother we didn't want. I invite us today to bring those people into our blessing as well. each one on a sacred, sacred journey to embrace the wholeness that we are, the sacred masculine, the divine feminine, to bring forth into our lives that vibrational truth, that vibrational yes, that allows and, and calls us to be the one, to be a demonstration of our unity with all life. All life. Hmm. And so I am in a place of absolute gratitude and excitement. Grateful for what has brought us here to this moment and excited for what comes next. Excited to answer the divine call of my soul. And so in this excitement, in this celebration of the divine feminine, in this experience of honoring the mothers in our lives, I invite you to stay in this sacred essence, this sacred space, as we share another piece of music another vibration of love, the absolute joy of you raise me up, knowing this is exactly the perfect vibration to take us into the next part of our experience. Reverend Rob, I think we're going to um, have you talk instead. We'll play that after your talk. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Just waiting for Spirit to tell me what to say. And I do want to say again, thank you for those that are here with us live and taking time out of your Mother's Day morning. If anyone is enjoying breakfast in bed, I also want to say thank you for not turning your camera on. But please do continue to enjoy your breakfast in bed. When I found this philosophy of new thought, I wasn't at first aware that people would study and celebrate and come together in community in various organizations and various forms around the New Thought movement. 
I was introduced to the science of mind side of our family, if you will, in Salt Lake City, Utah. Really interesting place to find the new thought philosophy. And what I know is that began what is now a lifetime journey of not only seeking the truth, but living the truth. In those early years, I was introduced to the words of Ram Das, and maybe many in this room have uh, read Ram as well. And he spoke of a path of awakening. And he spoke of a path of awakening as the, the steps we can take, the processes we can use, the beliefs that we can cultivate so that we may awaken to the truth, to the greater truth of who we are, that ultimate blend of the sacred masculine and the divine feminine. I'm not sure why the guys get to be sacred other than, well, we probably wrote the line. We get to come into a deeper understanding that we are one, one thing, one life. That there, and this gets really fun after a while for me. It did in those early days. Maybe it did for you as well. To start to come to realize that all the things that I love are part of this oneness. And I was blessed with a great mother, a mother that did everything, and a great father who held the family together and provided the opportunities. And I never really saw that it could be otherwise until a little later in life. And if there's anybody in this room that didn't have that great mother, that didn't have the mother we wished we would have had. Well, today we get to hold her gently as well. And we get to hold ourselves gently as well. Because we didn't know there was another way. We didn't know perhaps that we could ask for something different. We didn't know that we had the power within us to control the conditions of our lives. We were just learning those things. Myself, I feel like I came to this teaching, if you will, a little later in life than maybe I would have liked. And I have had the great honor to raise two amazing teenagers within this philosophy and within this movement and within this belief structure. but I can't guarantee they're gonna use it. It's like I can't guarantee that you're gonna walk away with anything from today's talk, but I believe you will. And what I know is I know the path of awakening is necessary for everyone, but what happens once we're awake? We just lie there having breakfast in bed? The great calling of your community, of the unity movement, of the religious science movement, of the divine science movement, of new thought, is that we can take what we learn, we can take what we have and what we're being taught, and we can take it out into the world, and we can create the truth, the life we truly desire. And that is, that is the essence of the talk today is that if, I, I believe everybody in this room is already well aware that you can create the life you desire. That you have within you the power to control the conditions of your life, of your life. Not necessarily control the circumstances that show up in our life. Our life. Because I don't have control over what other people do when they get behind the wheel of a vehicle or when they decide to uh, express themselves 
passionately at a supermarket or waiting for waiting in line for gasoline or anything else that all those situations that come up in our lives we can't control those but we sure can control how we respond to those experiences and do we bring what we learn here on sunday mornings into those experiences excuse me sunday morning yes sunday <laughs> do we bring those into our experiences of monday tuesday and wednesday I trust the answer to that is yes. I trust that you recognize within you that yes, it is my requirement, my responsibility to live these principles. And the question remains, okay, how? I, I will share with you that everywhere I go, everywhere I speak, whether it's virtually or in person, at some point in the experience, someone approaches me and says, I get what you're saying, but how do we do that? The answer is not always that easy. The answer isn't always, well, we say some affirmations and, and we share a prayer and we keep a high consciousness. Sometimes that answer is that I've got to drop everything and go pick someone up and take them to a hospital. Sometimes that answer is I've got to drop everything and I'm going to go feed people. In this line of work, if we allow it, and if we look at it, whether you're, uh, whether you, no matter how you interact with this community, we all get what are known as the crisis calls. Now, those that follow through on their education and get a title before their name or some initials after their name or whatever it may be, those calls tend to happen a little more regularly. But I'm sure that everyone in this room at one time or another has had someone reach out and call to them and say, I need help. I don't know what to do. And for some reason, I thought of you. That is the divine mandate. Not to tell people what to do, but to listen to what they want to be, what they want to share. To me, that is the divine feminine as well. That ability to just listen. To move beyond judgment. We talk a lot about that in churches like this. All over the planet. How do we release those judgments? Well, folks, I think I do have an answer to the how. But it starts from within. And more than anything, the divine feminine is represented by our willingness to listen to that within us, that voice. Some call it the still small voice. I encourage you to make it a loud and roaring voice of what you hear from within. And that is the beginning. Our willingness to listen is the beginning of the journey of enlightenment. Ram Dask asked us to walk the path of awakening, and I believe that path leads us to a recognition that we are each, in our own way, a lifelong journey. And borrowing Ram Dass's thought process not to reach enlightenment not to reach a destination that is called enlightenment but to be now awake to the fact and the truth that we are already awakened and we are already enlightened our songs sing about it our preachers preach about it you are the light you are the light of the world 
And our job, if you will, our mandate, our calling is to share that light out into the world. To share that light in whatever way we are uniquely equipped to share that light. And the other things I love about this movement is we constantly remind each other that you've got to be you because everybody else is already taken. And what we also talk about is imitation is suicide. We must be willing to stand on our own two feet, or if not able, on our own two wheels, whatever that might be, and say, this is the truth that I envision. This is what I see. This is what I know to be true. And we have a great process by which to discern what it is that is ours to do here on this planet. Because I know that can be confusing as well. Even as a minister. I graduated ministerial school in 2011 from a, a great, a great, great school of people. Mile High Church in Lakewood, Colorado. If you've ever heard of it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, well, we can talk about that offline at another time. But it is a great learning environment. And I was that guy in school going, put me in, coach, put me in. I'm ready. I'm ready to lead. I'm ready to step into a church. I'm ready to serve. Put me in, coach. Well, as it would happen, that wasn't exactly God's plan. And my wife and I took an opportunity to launch a church instead. That was not my true calling. And while we had a great time and, and we gave it a great run, it was not something destined to be enduring. It was a quick day trip on our journey. Okay, it was a two and a half year day trip, but it was still a good time. And then we followed the traditional path of, okay, so what do we do? And we look around the, the New Thought movement. And you know now, today, it, it is much, much easier for someone from the religious side, religious science side of our family to join and serve at a unity community. It is also much, much easier for someone in a, a unity church or pulpit or leadership to serve someone in, to serve a community or a church on the religious side, science side of the world. And I've, the analogy that is now being used is that we are one family tree. And as that tree was rooted, it was rooted in unity, religious science, and divine science. And as a tree grows, we grow new branches. And the trunk, the core, may remain the same, but we get new expressions and new experiences. Those things look like Agape International Spiritual Center with Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith, the Universal Foundation for Better Living with Reverend Sheila McKeithen. It looks like new emerging expressions of how we take this philosophy from our mind and our consciousness and put it to action in the world. The International New Thought Alliance is celebrating their 109th year uh, this summer. Longest running New Thought organization on the planet. The, affiliate, the uh, Association for Global New Thought is active in bringing this philosophy to the to the people the affiliation for global new thought is individually spearheading a collective collaboration of all new thought organizations in attendance at the parliament of world religions this august in in chicago the affiliated new thought network 
is working to bring people in collaboration that have either outgrown or been outgrown by the organizations that I've mentioned so far. And in the midst of it all, there is this thing emerging called New Thought Media Network. And I feel incredibly blessed that in the earliest stages, prior to what we knew was going to happen in 2020, we all remember 2020, right? I don't really have to remind us, do I? And just before that all gets going, I get that divine download that says, here's what you're going to do. This is how we make it work, folks. We have to be willing to listen. Now, I'm sure many of you have had that divine download at one time or another. And often it comes at the most inopportune times. Musicians tell stories all the time of finding their hit song while they're taking a shower. Now, come on, who in their right mind has pen and paper close enough to your shower to be able to write down those great ideas when they come through? We got to run to the office and try to write down these things when they come through. Well, there's a system, there's actually a process by which you can not only record your downloads, but activate them. Push the button that says, now is the time I want to record. And that is the life visioning process. I was first introduced to the life visioning process in 2002 at that church in Salt Lake City. And what the visioning is, if you're not familiar, is a blend of both prayer and meditation. In prayer, we are taught that we get to talk to God. We get to tell God what it is we want. We get to tell God what it is we believe. We get to tell God what it is we wish to experience. In meditation, we're taught that that's the time to listen and to just be in the silence and let whatever comes through come through. And, 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 and we don't record it. We just experience it. If you get really deep into meditation, you might you know, find you can walk a labyrinth or walk a path and, and have a little bit of physical movement involved in your receiving. And I don't know about you, but when I'm in a relationship with someone, I want to talk and I want to listen. I want to tell that person what I what I desire and, and the great, wonderful ideas that are coming through. But I also want to listen to their great ideas, to what that sparks for them, or perhaps where there's some confusion. And so in the life visioning process, we get to do both. We get to ask questions, we get to make directives, and we get to listen deeply. In 2020, my original teacher, well, he was a little tired of hearing me whine and cry about how my ministry wasn't going anywhere or any, doing any of the things I wanted it to do. And being in a great relationship with him, he can say things to me and uh, give me directives that maybe he wouldn't to other students or that other teachers wouldn't give to their students. And what he told me was, I want you on a 30-day vision quest. I want you to, in this month of January, start. this was probably the fifth or the sixth of the month, start visioning. I want 30 days of visioning out of you. And I want you to send me a picture of your visioning notes every single day. And if you don't, I'm not taking your phone calls anymore. That woke me up. That made me sit down and say, oh, okay. Because this is the guy that opened all these doors for me, folks, 20 years ago. And what came through in this process, in this 30-day vision quest, and I'm talking half hour a day. 
total investment of 15 hours. From an honest inquiry, what reveals itself is New Thought Media Network. What reveals itself is that we are a global broadcast network of positive music, media, and entertainment, inspiring humanity's journey. Uh, and excuse me, I switch that a lot sometimes. God still plays my trick. Uh, inspiring humanity's evolution along the journey of enlightenment and creating a world of love, peace, empowerment, and prosperity for all. OMG, how am I supposed to do that? But the visioning gave me those answers. And truthfully, as I began to record, as I began to record my experience, writing down what would come through for each question in the process, and I will share, the process is really easy. It's five questions. You ask the same five questions every single time you do the process. You never deviate from those five questions. And you just simply write down what your experience is. I felt peace wash over my body. I saw a vision of blue light swirling in, in the dust. I saw, I heard a song. These words came to me and you just record your experience. Day after 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 day. I've lost count, so I'm not going to go to 30, okay? Every time you do this. And what I have found is, well, the ego likes to have its voice too. So how do I know what is mine and what I wanted to tell myself? And how do I know what it was that was the divine? And I began to realize that the vision was speaking to me. Things were coming through that said, you are here to do this. You are going to do this. Here's how you do this. And if the words came through that I want, or I will, or I vow, or I commit, I knew that was the ego. And what we do is we start to look for the things that never go away. The th things that keep knocking on the door. I don't know if I ever would have cleaned my bedroom as a teenager if my mother didn't keep knocking on the door. Those things, the voice, the calling, that within you that never goes away. And if that's feeding the unhoused, hooray for you. If that's not, then don't do that. You will hear the divine giving you all the clues and giving you the, the mental blueprint of how anything can be accomplished. And so New Thought Media Network was immediately born in, in, the, in the beginning of the pandemic. March 18th, I stopped driving Uber for a living on March 13th. Like I said, I was kind of bummed out with ministry and questioning pretty heavily. I hung up the keys to the car and I told my wife, I don't think I'm doing that for a little while. We better hunker down and see what's going to happen here. And she said, okay, so what do we do then? I said, we do what we do. We pray. And on March 18th, I turned on a camera and did a live prayer for humanity that led to twice a day, 8.15 a.m. and p.m. Mountain Time. We still do those every day, seven days a week. Very rarely do we have a technical issue and miss. And if you need a prayer, 10, a, 10 15 a.m. and p.m., your local time, New Thought Media is there. Find us on YouTube, Facebook. And that led to some creative ideas with ministers saying, how do I do Sunday now? 
And we didn't know, but the vision gave us the clues and we figured that out. And then that leads to, well, the vision said that there would be talk shows. So who wants to do a talk show? And a great friend of mine stepped forward and we launched a program called Ministers Talk and Bleep. That happens on Friday mornings where a dear friend of mine and our guests talk about anything we want to talk about. And we often talk about the big issues of the day. Guns, reproductive rights, the unhoused, Black Lives Matter, trans rights or human rights. We're taking new thought to people beyond new thought by simply living these principles. And I could go on and on and on about how New Thought Media Network is now managing and producing video events for organizations across the country, how we're supporting a, uh, an uprising of New Thought in Kenya, and, and how we will be traveling to Kenya to broadcast and bring back to North America a different way of doing New Thought, because here's a real big key, folks. It would be real easy for this movement and our organizations to try to slap what we've been doing in North America on top of what's happening in Africa, in Asia, in South America, but that doesn't work. And many of my Canadian colleagues tell me consistently how even American New Thought doesn't always work with the culture of Canada. And how we have to be willing to adapt and take what we have learned and bring it out into the world in a way that the world will, will interact, will respond, will awaken to these powerful universal truths. In the past week, because of my position, I, I go to a lot of webinars about this, about marketing, about that, about spiritual stuff, secular stuff. And I am no longer surprised when the presenter is presenting new thought without ever saying God, without ever saying church, without ever talking about unity or religious science, without talking about Sunday morning, without talking about what we talk about in our spaces when we gather together. But I want you to know it's happening in the world. Last Wednesday, there were two different pre, uh, presentations by two different companies, two different speakers. They pretty much gave the same exact talk on, on how to support uh, a board in their nonprofit fundraising efforts, and they were both preaching these principles as pure as you can imagine. The one woman actually had a four-part chart that said, what you think about creates your beliefs, your creates create, uh, create your emotional response, and your emotional response creates the experience you're going to have in your life. It is our absolute mandate to take what we know and start making it real in the world. And that might just be asking for a moment of centering before a board meeting or an important event at your job, at your work. It may be getting involved with another nonprofit. It may be stepping up and saying, I want to serve these communities, Unity Ottawa, Unity Kitchener that I want to serve in the evolution, in the progress of, of this philosophy out into the world. But only you are going to know what that is. So you get to ask yourself that again and again and again. And trust the divine gives you those answers. You might get some other stuff too. But the deep calling of your soul cannot be denied, and it will not silence itself until you say yes. So if we want to know how to create the life we truly desire, if we want to understand this journey of enlightenment, 
Well, how we do that is really, really easy. Just say yes. Just say yes. That doesn't mean we say yes to those things that are that feel hurtful to us at that heart level. If we see something happening in the street, it's not just, oh, I'm just going to say yes, that's all God, that's all good. That's all BS. That's all spiritual bypass. I just realized BS and spiritual bypass, we just flip those around, right? But they're one and the same. It's the same thing. The yes is that sacred yes of our heart, of our calling. That yes to serve, that yes to share, that yes to live. No is a complete sentence. No is an absolutely valid word. Just don't lead with it. Lead with your yes. Because if it's a hard no, if it's a if it's a heartfelt no, spirit won't let it happen. It won't. You it something will get in your way. Somebody asks you to do something, and you, and your mind's going, eh, I don't know, but you say yes anyway, and somehow you end up with a cold that day and can't do it, or you get a crisis call and you got a bag off. The universe has an amazing way of self-correcting. So if we in our humanness make a misstep or a mistake, or we somehow misuse these principles, the universe has an amazing way of course correcting and bringing us back to our sacred yes. So I would like to say that I was a very good speaker today and made sure I looked at the clock and my timing and knew exactly where I was on, on my allotted time today. However, no, nah, I didn't do any of that. Uh, so, and that internal clock says, that's enough. That where we are right in this moment is absolutely perfect. And whether I'm three minutes short or 10 minutes over, where we are as a vibration, as a collective, as a, as a community that has come together for one hour and one hour alone, because I doubt, highly doubt this combination of people will ever be together again, exactly like this. And if by weird chance we all find this exact Zoom room again sometime, we won't be the same people we are today. Because we ha will have taken this, these principles and this philosophy, we will have lived it. And that lived experience is what takes us another step down the journey of enlightenment. You are the light. And the only thing you have to do is go live that light and be that light. And if you'd like to share that light, well, come hang out with C and Cheryl I saw in here earlier and the rest of us at New Thought Media Network for we're building a new form of community where everyone is welcome and you can come be you. I thank you for having me today. I'm falling in love with you already. Uh, the feeling is good. And I'm going to one last time invite you to take that feeling out into the world. If you're still with me, I invite you to close your eyes and join me in a quick prayer. Letting go of the hustle and the bustle of the day, letting go of all these words that have been spoken, let go of all those wonderful ideas that are percolating in your brain right now. So we may collectively come one more time to recognize the oneness that we all are. That deeply we are one. At the very core of our center, at the very core of our being, the very core of our principles and values, there is this oneness revealing itself in miraculous ways, amazing ways, awe-inspiring ways, and even sometimes very, very confusing ways. 
And yet I am reminded that it, it is still the one revealing itself as my life, as your life. For I recognize each life present here today, each life represented on this at this time as absolutely vital to humanity's evolution. Who you are, the gifts you bring, the ways you show up, absolutely vital to humanity's evolution in consciousness and in form. So I know everyone here is an absolute blessing upon the earth, an absolute blessing upon, upon this planet. And I celebrate that. And whether we call ourselves mothers or fathers or parents or both or neither, there is a divine mandate operating within each one of us to usher forth this new age of human consciousness. And so I claim for each one a sense of saying yes to that truth, yes to that mandate, yes to that inner calling, to say the sacred yes again and again and again. Recognizing the things that never go away and fully releasing the things that do not serve your individual vision your mission on this planet. I am in a place of absolute gratitude, thrilled to overflowing with gratitude, to be witness to the amazing ways God shows up as this community and as each and every individual, as all of life. It is all good because it is all God. And so I release this word into the law, that universal law that must demonstrate, that cannot return this word void. A universal principle of creation that is already acting upon this prayer, already acting upon this word and bringing forth the conditions, the experiences, the opportunity, the people to make it so. I place my full faith and trust in that law and I let that be. I let God be God. And if this word has resonated with anyone in this room, in any way, if you resonate with this word, please join me in an affirmation of truth as we say together, and so it is. <laughs>